let's have a quick look at transferring our thumbnail drawings here into production storyboards. Uh, one of the things I really want to have a look at is this second shot here, shot number two. It's an establishing shot. And what I really want to do is this one is having it tracking or panning from right to left uh, to reveal the cabin over the frozen lake. So, you know, it's a pretty scrappy sort of thumbnail, but that's kind of the point. It's getting the information across. So think outside the box when you're creating storyboards. If you need to go outside of the drawing, you can. So I'm going to go back to my template here and I'm actually going to just build a really long panel. And you might be able to do one that's really high, create as many panels as you want. Now to do this, I'm going to go and use this little tool here. This is the shape tool. Shortcut is the letter U and you've got rectangles, ellipses and stuff like that. But I'm going to select a rectangle because I'm going to do just basically a giant rectangle along here. I'm going to make sure it's set to shape. The fill color, which is the color in between, I want it to be the same gray as what I've got here. So I'm going to click on that and use the color picker like so. And the stroke I want set to black and let's draw in the rectangle as big as I want it. So I'm just going to drag that through and that will create a shape. So there's my shape layer. It's completely editable. Let's go back to our move tool and there it is there. So if I need to expand the width of that, the stroke on that. So I'm going to let go again to the letter U to bring up the shape tool there. And I can actually start ramping up the stroke on that, depending on how pedantic you want to be with that kind of thing. So there it is there. Uh, I might want to get rid of the action box here. I could just you know, draw a line through it later. Or what I could do is literally just create another blank layer. Let me just maximize this for the screen. There we go, we've got a few little things here. My workspace is a little bit off, so I'm just going to go Reset Essentials. All right, there we go. Um, and I'm just going to turn that panel off. New technology, guys. Um, so I'm just going to put a little square over this one for now. So I might want to reuse the original template later. So there's my background layer template. New blank layer, M for marquee tool. Now you can use the shape tool for this as well, letter U that we just did for the one there, but I'm just going to create a rectangle over that. This is a blank layer. G to bring up my bucket tool. Make sure you are set on the bucket tool, not the gradient tool, and select white and dump. And we can command D, deselect. And that's going to build us a really long panel with one little bit of information dialogue there. All right, let's get our layers back. There it is there. As I said, I'm not going to do all of these. I'm just going to focus on this one over here. So there it is, shot two. I've labeled it. I've changed the color. And I've created a blank layer. Let's just redo that one. A blank layer and rename that line or line art, uh, whatever is necessary. And I'm going to also give it a color. So right click and just give it a little identifying color so you know where your line work is um, later on. Next thing we want to do is literally start, you know, redrawing it or drawing over the one you've got. So I'm going to go for B for brush and again, right click. You can use your Wacom for this as well and select a brush that's going to work. So I usually suggest, you know, before you start going too crazy with this kind of stuff, again, I'm going to set back to black because I'm currently painting in white. See if you can find a brush that's going to work for you um, stylistically. Um, if it's not working, you know, find another one, see whatever works for you. So that's kind of working. It's a little bit, a little bit off for me, but I will plow through with that um, just for demo purposes. So as I said, I'm not going to spend too much time on that, but start getting your line work in, fixing up your shot. Um, I'm going to do mine, you know, super rapidly because time is always of the essence. But you know, consider what you really want to be able to say, see during this sh shot. Um, what needs to be said if you need to use multiple layers, anything like that. I am definitely not going to spend that much. Uh, you know, usually for a production board, um, you want to spend a little bit of time on it. But it's still productions. The shots change constantly, so whatever's necessary. Um, if you are drawing, you know. Keep an eye on that, um, you know, use that shift key if you need to for being able to draw uh, straight lines as well. 
it's a really helpful one but you know find out what's necessary as you start getting your information through a little bit more and you start getting more definition in your shots then you may want to start lowering the visibility of your background image so it's a good starting point but if you find it doesn't actually serve you you may want to lower the opacity or potentially even turn off completely so you do see your finished product so here it is here and you know, I'm kind of getting that I'm just turn mine off now so I can you know, kind of figuring out what I'm what I'm doing as far as information goes and all that kind of stuff um, but I know what I want for this so I'm gonna put some mountains in the background something like that sorry new technology um, I'm gonna put a little jetty out here with maybe a boat that's kind of frozen into the lake and maybe just have that lake zipping around a little bit so allow for changes as we go put some little pine trees in the background let's break up our shot a little bit and some higher mountains even further away and of course the incoming storm let's do that put a couple of other little houses in the background something like that all right so you know figure out how much detail you need for your shot um, and you could spend a bunch of time on this but I'm going to keep it light for this tutorial next thing I want to do uh, potentially is spruce this up so you could kind of show your your director or the art director this and go hey is this you know is this what we want for this particular shot and then I go you know what that's 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 pretty much getting there um, do it in passes so if it's not getting there then you can always just you know redo 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 um, but next thing I want to do is really add a bit of grayscale to this so at the moment it's kind of a bit flat it's just you know it's got a little bit of form to it uh, there's two kind of ways I'm going to suggest doing adding grayscales to your image and we really just want to add the grayscales to you know make get a bit of depth to your image make characters pop and that kind of thing and so the two different ways of doing that one is a technique known as flatting and it's kind of a more controlled method I'll give you a quick demo of that um, and we want to make sure that when we're coloring or adding grayscales we do it on a separate layer to our line work and typically we build it underneath our line work so if you are happy with your line work you may wish to lock it so you don't accidentally mess it up but for me I trust myself I'm gonna add a new layer and drag it below or if you hit command and plus it will build it automatically and I'm gonna call this uh, value so this is gonna be my light to dark values I'm also gonna give it a color big fan of giving stuff colors because it just you know it makes the most important layers pop out all right so line work I'm just gonna lock that for now so I don't accidentally choose it and value so the first technique I mentioned is using a flatting technique and what we essentially do for that is um, there's a few ways of doing that but use the lasso tool um, and this is great for just drawing you know, particularly for environments you can just draw some straight lines and close that shape and go G for your paint bucket and select the value for that and dump that in like so um, forgot to mention if your line work does actually you know if it's got you've already added some grayscale to that and stuff like that set the blend mode to multiply and essentially that will make all the uh, white layers or lighter layers invisible anyway so it's a nice little trick if it's just line work by itself then it doesn't really matter anyway back to the value layer uh, once you've done that you can command D deselect and then you might want to just you know grab the lasso tool and block in the next area like so close off that shape and G drop in whatever color you want for that so as you start going with this I'm just gonna do a few little tiny bits more on that I'm not definitely not gonna spend too much time on that um, got my color pick down there and G bang click it in there and away we go uh, and I'm not doing it massively precise but if you do have straight edges that's great a couple of another quick trick is when you are creating your using your poly lasso tool click 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 point to point if you make a mistake mistake hit the delete or backspace key 
you can go back uh, if you double click it will close the shape and then of course command D will des deselect uh, another really interesting as you're using the poly lasso tool if you hold down the alt or option key it will suddenly transform to a freeform lasso so you can switch between straight and freeform you can do it vice versa with the freeform to poly and if you need to add to a shape you press the shift key a little plus sign appears if you need to delete from that shape alt or option will allow you to negative that shape so I'm just going to command D that so that is the essentially uh, similar to the flatting technique and uh, if you actually do look at that with the line work off you can see it's just a couple of big block shapes but it works with the line work for that so that's one way of doing it the next way is a bit more freeform and that's kind of using painterly brushes and effects so I'm going to go back to B for brush again I'm on my values layer here my grayscales and let's get a brush that's going to work for us so depending on what style you're going for you might want to go for a painterly brush you might want to go for something simple like a hard round pressure opacity but you know find your style and you can use this to start painting in so there it is there don't forget to use your square brackets on your keyboard if you've got them to start building that in and you can start painting in once you start getting your values in your dark and light areas um, you can start using your um, command sorry your option key alt option key to color pick while you're on there and you can start building that in um, and you can get some real big brushes and just start popping that in so play around with the brushes that work for you again you want to just get it you know not just make your uh, your your environment stand out um, but also start thinking about the lighting as well how you want the light to be affecting over your image whether you want dark areas or light areas or if there's beams of light and also about really getting your, your image to, to step out and sort of interact all right um, pretty scruff but we're kind of getting there most storyboards you'll find are typically going to be grayscale but there are exceptions to that uh, another quick one I'm going to mention is selecting your brushes so you know I'm going to right click here with my brush and you can see I've got all the different brushes in here um, a few extra ones that I've added over over the period of time if you do want to try some extra brushes out um, in your brush panel here oh, there we go this one here with our different brushes if you hit the little cog mechanism to the top right um, you can go to get more brushes and definitely need to close a few tabs here and then go into the Adobe sign uh, site and sign in and what you'll actually find out is that you do have um, some additional brush uh, brushes that you can pick up for that um, and of course you can go to uh, free brush sites and stuff like that so this does take a few moments just to load up um, while it's loading up there we go thousands of brushes um, and you might be able to find some that are going to be relevant for uh, what you're actually after so you know we've got runny inks mag manga brushes uh, the ones I'm looking for are potentially art markers could be really good um, so you know traditional um, a lot of traditional stuff was done using Copic markers um, and you know that's something that we can always try and use uh, if we're going traditional but in this case we are literally you know using Photoshop so let's see what we can find here here we are in our brushes again I'm going to go to the cog now that I've downloaded that I'm going to go import brushes and I'm going to go to my downloads do, 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 depending on how your computer is set up and there's the dot ABR and hit open so my screen's a bit compressed at the moment but that's fine and if we scroll down towards the bottom here now in my brushes I now have some art markers so you know have a play around with those um, and you might actually get some really interesting ones that might work giving you more of a Copic marker style feel um, again you know all of this is is play around um, until you get exactly what you want um, and 
you know you can get some lovely effects in here use the alt option key and pick out your colors as well so you, know, you can get some really nice sort of effects but each marker is going to have its own little little thing and you can build little brushes for your trees and stuff like that uh, etc etc all right so i'm going to kind of you know leave that as is for now um, the other aspects you want to look at is filling in the information on your form when it comes to annotations. So, for example, we've got shot and timing and action. Um, really quite simple. So you want to make sure you do put that information in there. Uh, if you're going to do it text-wise, I'm going to go T for text, and let's have a look what we've got in here. I'm just going to click in shot number. I happen to know this is shot number two, so I'm just going to show click and two. Um, let's get a font that's going to work for me. Whoops. Just going to step out of that, hit T again, and uh, Myriad Pro is fine. I'm just going to go regular for that, and let's drop the size down. So just once you got the set, it's usually a lot easier, and let's get it in place. There we go, and there we go. Nice, cool, and action. So action is basically what's happening in the in that particular shot. Uh, what I can do is just drag out a text box now, T for text, and I can type in uh, track left, um, and let's go Lake Siljan, frozen, reveal to cabin, um, and let's put in uh, storm. setting in nice cool and so there we've got that there I'm going to get rid of this trope transformation controls there back to my text tool so remember when you are writing text hit the escape to get out of that or hit the apply button and timing this is a real real simple one to think of but it can be a complex one uh, the timing I'm just going to make sure my setting is left right uh, timing is roughly how long you think that shot is going to last for. So you kind of need to imagine it in your head and go, all right, I'm going to hold that for one, two, three, four seconds, however many seconds you think it's going to hold for. Um, so I'm just going to five seconds. When we get really precise, we get down to frames. So how many, how many seconds, how many frames, but give it a rough idea of how that shot is. So you can actually time out how long your scene is going to go for. So we're almost there for this one. The other thing you do need to do is, uh, add camera movement so we really don't want to have just a bunch of static shots in your film you want to make sure there's some movement in it if that is the case for a particular shot do check the camera movement cheat sheet uh, and also you know have a look at examples of existing ones that have done i'm going to once again just create a new layer for this and i'm going to call it uh, cam move like so and i'm going to give it a color as well do love my color tags for this um, definitely not no color that's not what I was after I was after red and draw your camera moves in and usually what I like to do is actually make my camera moves stand out and also keep them on a separate layer so later on if we do turn this into an automatic um, you can easily remove them because we don't need to actually see them they're more for a production crew so I'm just going to draw in a whoops that's not what I wanted B for brush and draw in select layer and draw in a um, just look at my old brush but that still works draw in a directional arrow in this case and I might want to write in that as well sorry just getting wrong buttons being pressed um, accidentally created a text layer brush is way too big and let's switch that over sorry track could use the text tool but um, so always try and make sure your whoever's operating it or looking at your image knows exactly what's going on so it could be something like going I'm gonna track but I'm gonna go um, 
just going to get back to a brush that I know is going to work and let's go A to B for example so you know, that's a quick example of that um, because it is on its own layer if we do need to move it later I'm just going to merge these together which is what I intended in the first place I accidentally hit the wrong button so I can move that you know and push it off to the side maybe so we can look at that and go oh okay cool it's a tracking shot uh, another nice way of doing this is also, you know, you could literally just frame it in. So uh, let's get it. Uh, auto select is on. Sorry, guys. My my uh, my personal nemesis when documents get complicated is with the move tool. If auto select is on, it will keep selecting, you know, whatever you click on. It's super annoying, uh, which is exactly what's happening with me at the moment. Um, but we can jump in this and sort of go all right well what do I actually want to see in my shot frame it up once again and then you can sort of go all right well here's our starting point and then we're going to move from A to B and go A B Etc. So we, you know, we do want to have make sure we got some camera moves in there as well. All right. Um, only other thing really is just making sure that you put some little bit of information in the bottom uh, over here. So I'm going to jump into the text tool for this again. Um, put in the artist name, which is not showing up because I've set the text to white mistake Joe Schmo uh, the date uh, I'm not going to be too finicky with that but essentially each time you make it an iteration you want to put in a new date um, the production give your production a name and the page number so if you do multiple pages give it a page one of three for example uh, the scene number this is scene in this case this could be this is probably scene one and you may also want to give it a name you know, opening scene, it's a nice uh, opening scene, or fight scene, or whatever, you know, get, helps people identify what that is for that particular shot. Um, so that is mostly it. So basically bring your shots in, fix them up, make them look good, put the information down. There are our production boards. Um, if you do need to go over multiple pages, there's a few techniques to do that. Um, one would just be simply opening up a new document. Later on, I'll show you guys how to use layer comps to keep everything in track in one place. Um, but for now, let's see how we go setting up our production storyboards. All right, we'll catch you guys later.